Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today is the day college football 25 releases for early access. <laughs> and before we get our journey on the new game started together, let me just say what a week we had last week on stream. Thank you to anyone who hung out with me or is new around here and subscribed. I welcome in all college football fans. If you haven't subscribed already though, make sure you do join our growing family here and like this video. Leave me a comment if you're excited for my first long-term dynasty series in college football 25. The first week of our playoff, we cut 12 teams down to eight. This past week, we cut eight schools down to just two. So let's recap what happened last week in the playoff and if you missed any of the games or streams you can go watch them again on my channel and make sure you stay up to date on my community page and on my X account which is linked below as always starting with our first quarterfinal matchup from last week it was North Texas and Western Kentucky. We had a great matchup hosted by Western Kentucky. They got the ball first and were stopped going three and out. So North Texas took over and gave the ball to Oscar Attaway, who ran it through the Hilltopper defense early. And then eventually Austin on for the mean green was able to roll out Throw it on the run and find Roderick Burns for the seven yard touchdown reception. Mean Green took the lead early. Western Kentucky got the ball back and on third and 15, couldn't do anything with it near the end of the second quarter and were forced to take three points. So going into the half, it was a 7-3 North Texas lead. Western Kentucky started the third quarter with the ball. Not much happened on offense for the Hilltoppers in this one. They take a shot here, picked off by the Mean Green, throwing the ball deep again though, and this was their last chance here. Malachi Corley makes the reception, but on fourth down, miscommunication, and just like that, North Texas moves on seven to three. They survive the first quarter final. Next up on our slate, it was Hawaii and San Jose State in the next quarter final. Braden Shager was excellent. He was excellent for sure in this one, finding Jonah Pinoke over the middle early and then faking the handoff. Deep shot and a touchdown early for Hawaii. Jonah Pinoke killing San Jose State on that first drive and really impressing. They had another chance to score, but stopped on fourth down. San Jose State's defense prevails. Siobhan Cordero, former Hawaii Rainbow Warrior who transferred to San Jose State on fourth down, picks it up. They run the ball and get it into the end zone with the big man, tie the game up at seven. Hawaii gets the football back and starts to move it again. Braden Shager was very good in this game. And then the game froze. You can see we're loading right back into it. Of course, it was tied 7-7. We were just about to end the third quarter when the game froze. So I gave these teams one more quarter to go at it after reloading into the game, basically picking up where we left off. Hawaii got the football first, second time around after the freeze. And down the field, they went big pass to Chuki Hines. And then Braden Shager to the sideline. Chuki Hines catches it. And then Shager on third and goal looks over the middle and finds his man, Poe Fele Ashlock, for the touchdown, going up 14 to 7. And that is all that happened in the fourth quarter. Hawaii stops San Jose State, and that was the ball game. Hawaii moves on to the semis to face North Texas. And then Old Dominion faced Rice. It was going to be Navy representing Yukon, but look at those Rice Owls in uniform. They look exactly like Yukon, basically, so I made the right decision there. They got the ball first, drove it down the field, and took three points from Old Dominion on the first drive. But Rice represented UConn well today, except for this interception. Old Dominion got the ball back just before halftime, and things were looking good for the Monarchs at this point. Just before the second half ended, their quarterback took it to the end zone, Hayden Wolf for six. And the Monarchs did take a lead into the halftime locker room, but then this game froze and we had to kick it back off, knowing that Old Dominion was up 7-3. So I gave them basically a quarter and one minute because that's about how much time was left in the game. Old Dominion started with the football on the redo after the freeze and Rice picked off Hayden Wolf took it down inside the 10. Big play for UConn, represented well by Rice today. They took advantage early and scored 
to basically go up 10-7. You gotta remember the score before the freeze. So at this point, Rice is only up three points, 10-7, but big play here. And the Rice Owls represent UConn well all day today. They really did come back, played well, executed, and punched it into the end zone with Ari Broussard. And at MetLife Stadium, the Rice Owls represent UConn for a win and move on. So UConn on to the semifinals via Rice. And then the All-Louisiana Bowl. What a quarterfinal we had here. Absolutely incredible game. We literally pick it up in the second quarter as nothing happened in the first. This was a rough start to the game, even though it turned out to be an absolute classic. Louisiana Tech punches it in early, though. But on second and goal, Louisiana Tech, as the clock's running out in the second half, make an absolutely incredible mistake. Marshawn Lynch would be pissed seeing this. You don't throw the ball on any goal to go from the one inch yard line Pete Carroll knows that but Louisiana got it to start the third quarter and did make a great play on third down got it inside a field goal range and took their three points getting the first that was really the only offense they had up until that point getting to the end of the third quarter here and Louisiana Tech picks up the third down in a big way and they did end up taking three points as well, going up 10-3. Could have scored a touchdown there, but with the way Louisiana was running offense, it was looking like nothing was going to happen until their defense steps up, picked off by Amir McNeil, and down the field he went streaking to the end zone. Nobody's going to tackle him. The Raging Cajuns tied the game up with defense. Pick six, and they were right back in this game. Massive turning point. The momentum was with the the hosts here. Louisiana Tech's Parker McNeil took a shot on the next drive and he was picked off again. Unbelievable scenes in Lafayette. Absolutely unclutch from Parker McNeil. Absolutely awful decision making. Could have ran the game out, but they throw it. Two interceptions on two drives, one pick six. And then how about the Raging Cajuns with the momentum, using it to their advantage, getting it down inside the five and punching it in to take the lead with a minute 33 to go. Louisiana Tech with the football to start their next drive though, and they did move it, but on third down with 30 seconds left and one timeout, they ran the ball out of shotgun. Awful decision making. The game froze just after that, and I don't even care if they picked up the fourth down to get it. It didn't sound like they did, and Louisiana moves on. 17 to 10 on to the semi-finals first one at the Rose Bowl it's North Texas and Hawaii and Hawaii came out firing again through Braden Shager finding a big play on their first drive down inside the 25 they get to fourth and goal and they had to kick the field goal there probably could have gone for it but North Texas's turn Ox Oscar Attaway up the middle down towards the 50 good drive for the mean green but they also had to settle for three in the first quarter it was a good football game. Braden Shager over the middle, another big play coming at you. And then later in the drive, Braden Shager looking to the outside, finding Jonah Panote. Great catch against the sideline there. First and goal. Braden Shager to the corner of the end zone. It's Ashlock for the touchdown. 10-3 Rainbow Warriors go up. Over the middle, they're coming back at it. Late in the second quarter here's chance to ensure their lead that they built 10-3 and Braden Shager wants more up the middle down the field they go hurrying it up 15 seconds to go in the second quarter about when they snap this ball and Shager finds his man in the corner of the end zone it's Alex Perry for six, 17-3 at half, Hawaii all over North Texas early, but the mean green came back early in the third quarter. What a start to the half they had down the field. Oscar Attaway doing his thing up the middle, rumbling, bumbling, and stumbling to the five, and then Austin on, pulled it down, up the middle he went and crossed the goal line to make it a seven-point game. Back on offense comes Hawaii with a chance to extend their lead, and they looked very good once again. Shager finding Chuki Hines, giving it to Tylen Hines, who ran it up the middle and did it well. All five foot seven of them fighting for yards, and then Braden Shager on third down, looking to the corner of the end zone, but it was dropped by Chuki Hines, and they had to take three. So North Texas still very much in this football game. But on fourth down with about three minutes to go, they have to go for it. Down two scores, and why are you handing the ball off? Terrible decision making. 
and that leads to Hawaii advancing. 20 to 10, they knock out the Mean Green and move on to the final game of our Dynasty Decider playoff, the Rainbow Warriors, the first of the two finalists. And then it's Louisiana and UConn in the other semifinal to face Hawaii, one of these two teams. UConn represented by Rice, moving the ball well early, second and goal, lots of time for TJ McMahon who does find Brad Rosner in the back of the end zone. And then another chance for them to score and they go up 14-10 in the first half. UConn represented well again by Rice. The Owls doing their thing, but Louisiana with a chance to answer late in the second quarter here. Third and inches. What are you doing? The only thing he couldn't have done there is take a sack and he did. Louisiana doesn't get points at the end of the second quarter, but they do at the start of the third. Jacob Bernard strike down the middle and then they get a stop. Rice can't do anything and they get the ball back. Ben Wolveridge takes the option, takes the handoff, the quarterback for Louisiana. Down the field he goes, look at him run in Detroit. Absolutely incredible semifinal we had here. Looked like it was gonna be all Rice, but Louisiana showing signs of life. And then this play, which decided the game, I'll say that. Louisiana could have scored there. What is he doing? I know it's a computer versus a computer. And then they take a field goal when they could have gone for it on fourth and goal. Unbelievable decision making. It seems like Louisiana was throwing it after what we saw there. PJ McMahon and Rice took advantage of it after that late in the third quarter, running it down the field. And then at the start of the fourth, touchdown, going up 21-10. And that was pretty much it at that point. Chance for Louisiana to come back just over two minutes. They're still basically alive at this point, but throwing a pick in the end zone. Ben Woolridge and the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns out, eliminated. It's Rice representing UConn well, and the Huskies move on to the final game to face Hawaii. So the final is set. UConn and Hawaii. Technically, these were the first two schools out of the 12 that I decided to put in the playoff. So I'm fired up that these two teams made it to the final game. I am going to stream the final game on College Football 25. But let me just tell you a few things about these two schools. Hawaii's got the beauty. Hawaii's got the vibes. Absolutely culturally superior to UConn, I would say. But Connecticut has our own culture. I am from the state, so I'd love to see UConn win this, of course. But I would love to see either of these two teams win this. Truly would love a Hawaii rebuild. I hope their stadium is in-game. But there's two things that we love about UConn, about the state of Connecticut. UConn basketball, the women's, the men's, 17 championships between the two. The men's are back-to-back -back national champions in basketball. UConn really is the cream of the crop in college basketball, the college basketball capital of the world. The other thing the state of Connecticut has is pizza, baby. We love our pizza. Dave Portnoy calling New Haven, Connecticut, the pizza capital of the world. Just some things to think about. Who do you think is going to win the final. I will see you on Monday, July 22nd when I return from my vacation. I'm out of the country for the week, but I'm fired up to play this game when I come back, and you should be too. I will see you when I return. This has been Therios. You'll never walk alone.